when a pregnant golden retriever in need of rescue was admitted to the shelter, new employee Macy immediately took responsibility for its care. The veterinarian had already cautioned Macy about the abnormal appearance of the puppies on the ultrasound. Nevertheless, Macy was completely astounded when the golden retriever delivered what resembled cow puppies on the day the puppies were born. How could this even happen? One morning, Macy was awakened by loud howling from downstairs, signaling that it was time for Bella, the golden retriever, to give birth. She leapt from her bed and hurried to Bella's side. They had shared many experiences, and seeing Bella in such discomfort deeply saddened Macy. However, she knew this was not the time for sorrow. Instead, she needed to concentrate on aiding the birth of the puppies, despite the vet's warning that these were not ordinary puppies. Macy was still shocked when the first puppy, resembling a cow, emerged. What had Bella just given birth to, and what should Macy do next? After two hours of labor, as the first puppy began to emerge, Macy couldn't believe what she was seeing, the vet had forewarned her, but the reality was beyond anything she had anticipated. It is not rare for dogs rescued from the streets to be pregnant upon arrival at the rescue station. Life on the streets boils down to basic instincts of survival and reproduction, however. It is unusual for a rescue station to be well equipped to handle pregnant dogs. When the struggling pregnant golden retriever was brought in, the shelter was unprepared for the situation. They were already short staffed, and the dog clearly required significant care. Managing the dog's needs wouldn't end with the birth, additional efforts would be necessary to care for the puppies. Moreover, a senior technician was particularly concerned about the unusual nature of this pregnancy, which needed urgent attention. Currently, the shelter staff was exploring various options on how to manage the situation. Some options were more favorable than others, including transferring the dog to another shelter or finding a new volunteer. Euthanizing the dog was also a heartbreaking possibility under consideration due to the shelter's overwhelming responsibilities, despite the staff shortage at the rescue center. Most team members were inclined to consider euthanasia as a solution. However, a relatively inexperienced employee named Macy, who had always been passionate about animals, especially dogs, played a crucial role in ensuring one particular dog received the necessary care. From a young age, Macy had aspired to become a veterinarian and had started her education accordingly. However, her career path took a different turn following a life-changing trip to Indonesia, in America. Macy was accustomed to seeing well-cared-for dogs, but in Indonesia, she encountered numerous malnourished and sick dogs roaming the streets. This experience profoundly affected her, shifting her focus from people to the plight of these dogs. Upon returning to the United States, Macy began researching street dogs and was shocked at their prevalence, not only in her small hometown but also in larger cities. Determined to make a difference, Macy moved to Boston at 18 and immediately got a job at a rescue center for stray dogs due to its understaffing. Filled with hope and determination, Within her second week there, Macy faced a critical situation with Bella, a pregnant golden retriever. When euthanasia was suggested for Bella, Macy could not stand idly by. She volunteered to work overtime for free to ensure that all her regular duties were completed and that Bella received the extra care she needed. The head of the station appreciated Macy's gesture and entrusted Bella entirely to her care. Macy decided to take Bella home temporarily so she could monitor her closely over the next few weeks. Despite the challenge of juggling two jobs and commuting between her house and the station, Macy managed, thanks in part to her proximity to the station and the help from her dog-loving roommate, Macy felt fulfilled by her efforts, though she was aware of the complexities ahead. Her colleagues at the station stepped up to take on some of her tasks. Easing her burden and allowing her more time to devote to Bella, they were touched by Macy's dedication and compassion towards the dog, despite the limited resources at the understaffed station. There was only so much they could achieve. Macy found herself overwhelmed, even with the assistance of her colleagues. In the final stages of her pregnancy, Bella was not faring well. This necessitated multiple visits to the veterinarian. Adding significantly to Macy's stress as she cared for Bella during this critical time, these frequent trips were not only draining emotionally but also financially costly. Internally, Macy began to question the feasibility of it all. The future well-being of Bella and her soon-to-be-born puppies weighed heavily on her mind, especially considering her strained financial situation. Although disheartened, Macy endeavored to suppress her concerns about Bella's health and the mounting expenses. Focusing instead on the immediate needs, during one of the vet visits, 
the doctor managed to stabilize Bella with some medication and was keenly focused on the ultrasound scans of the puppies. However, the images were unclear, and from what little could be discerned, it seemed unlikely that Bella had mated with another golden retriever, or any typical dog breed, for that matter, the puppies appeared unusually peculiar. A fact that puzzled the vet and his colleagues who could not pinpoint exactly what was amiss with them, this ambiguity started to distress Macy, making her worry about the puppies' health and the financial burden she was shouldering, particularly if the puppies were doomed from the start. Given Bella's history as a street dog, she could have been impregnated by almost any creature capable of breeding with dogs. Macy faced the unnerving possibility of dealing with an unknown when the puppies arrived. Could they even be considered puppies? Despite these fears, the vet reassured Macy that, despite the odd appearance on the ultrasound, the pups seemed healthy at the moment. This assurance brought a small measure of relief to Macy amidst her other troubles. After returning home with Bella from the vet, Macy realized that the birth was imminent. She prudently decided to take time off from her job at the shelter, understanding that her attention needed to be devoted to Bella. Whatever anomalies the vet had noticed, they had left Macy sufficiently worried to prioritize her beloved pet's upcoming labor. Macy recognized the necessity of being by Bella's side during this critical time. As each day passed, her connection with Bella deepened, especially seeing the dog's resolve despite her struggles. Bella's unwavering affection was palpable. And Macy's commitment to her grew stronger, yet, this decision brought challenges. Residing in a cramped apartment and barely managing her own finances, Macy faced difficulties in providing Bella the life she deserved. Further complicating matters were the puppies Bella was expecting. Handling multiple dogs was beyond Macy's capacity, though her love for Bella drove her to assist in any way possible. The dilemma of what to do with the puppies weighed heavily on Macy's mind. Managing with just Bella seemed feasible, but not with a whole litter of puppies. Macy had hoped for more time to think it through, to figure out what would be best for everyone involved. However, time was not on her side. One night, just when she thought she could get a bit of rest, Bella began her labor unexpectedly. Macy had wished for the birth to occur during the day, when she could be fully alert and prepared. But, in keeping with the unpredictability of the situation, Bella started her labor at 2 a.m. Macy had tried to be ready for such an event by setting up a baby monitor in the dog pen. It was a way for her to keep an ear on things even when she couldn't be physically present. She had hoped the monitor would alert her when Bella's labor began, so she could rush to her side. Still, despite her best preparations, it was simply impossible to keep vigil whole day, deep in sleep when the labor started. The sudden cries from the monitor jolted Macy awake. The sound was sharp, almost frantic. It took her a moment to fully grasp the situation, to make sure that she wasn't dreaming or imagining things given the exhaustion from the long days and nights she had been working. As the noise continued, she shook off her sleep and immediately sprang into action. She threw on some old jogging pants and a t-shirt, barely managing to pull herself together, and rushed downstairs to the dog pen. When she flicked on the light, Macy was relieved to find Bella in the early stages of labor. The moment was both surreal and urgent but Macy knew she had to remain calm for Bella's sake. Bella was panting heavily, her body trembling with each contraction. Her tongue hung out as she struggled through the pain, and Macy could tell that the journey ahead would be long and exhausting for both of them. Macy knew this was her moment to apply everything she had learned during her time volunteering at the animal shelter. She was more than prepared to help Bella through the delivery. But she also understood that this was Bella's experience, and she had to face it largely on her own. Macy's role was to provide support and reassurance, to be present for Bella, but she knew that the process of giving birth was a personal and challenging one for the dog. Macy immediately went into action, grabbing towels and a bucket of water. Although the pen was designed to contain some of the mess, Macy knew it would still require a lot of effort to keep everything under control. There would be plenty of cleanups to do along the way and she needed to make sure everything was as clean and comfortable as possible for Bella. Macy's heart ached for Bella, but she was determined to support her in every way she could, staying steady and present no matter how chaotic things became. Macy gently caressed Bella's face, speaking soothing words to her, offering calm in the midst of her discomfort. You're doing great, Bella. I'm here, you're safe, Macy reassured her. Trying to comfort both Bella and herself, after about 30 minutes of tense labor, Macy finally glimpsed the first puppy emerging, 
A wave of nervousness and excitement washed over her as she watched the little one make its way into the world. She was filled with anticipation, her mind racing with questions about what kind of puppies Bella would have. She didn't know the identity of the other parent, and so she had no way of predicting what these puppies would look like. The suspense was almost unbearable as Macy waited to see what Bella's puppies would look like, but as the first one came into view, Macy's excitement quickly turned to astonishment. She couldn't believe her eyes, the puppy's spots, its nose, its legs, all of it was unlike anything Macy had ever seen in a dog before. Macy wondered if she was even looking at a dog at all. The little creature bore a striking resemblance to a tiny calf, not a dog. Macy blinked hard, almost in disbelief. Could this be real? She hadn't expected to see something so odd, so out of the ordinary. Macy's thoughts raced. Was this even possible? It seemed improbable. But then again, canine genetics were often full of surprises, and Macy had learned enough to know that things didn't always go according to plan. Still, it didn't make sense that Bella's puppies would look so different from what was expected. Surely, they should have resembled Bella, their mother, at least in some way. With little time to dwell on her thoughts, Macy focused on the task at hand, more puppies, or whatever these creatures were, needed her immediate attention to come into the world safely, there was no time for hesitation, she quickly sprang into action again, cleaning the first peculiar puppy and carefully wrapping it in a bundle of towels to keep it warm, she placed it gently with its siblings, who were waiting for their turn, as Bella continued her labor. Macy couldn't help but notice that the next puppy looked exactly like the first, strangely similar, and equally odd, the third one followed suit, and Macy's confusion only deepened, why did all the puppies look so much like calves, Macy pinched herself to make sure she wasn't still dreaming, but no, she was wide awake and fully aware of the unusual scene unfolding before her, the puppies continued to arrive, each one resembling the others in odd ways. It was becoming more difficult to reconcile what she was seeing with her expectations. What could explain this bizarre pattern? After what felt like an eternity, two and a half hours of labor, the entire litter of puppies was born. It was 4.30 in the morning, and Macy, still in disbelief, couldn't help but feel that she wasn't imagining the whole thing. There was no way she could be. All the puppies looked so strikingly similar and bizarrely unusual. In a way that Macy couldn't put into words. The pattern of their appearance was consistent but impossible to explain, unsure of what to do next, Macy decided to stay awake the rest of the night, ensuring the survival of all the animals, she would keep a close watch over them, doing her best to keep them warm and comfortable until she could take them to the shelter later that morning. She hoped that the veterinarian at the shelter would be able to provide some much-needed answers to this puzzling situation, as dawn broke and the first rays of sunlight began to spill into the room. Macy still found herself unable to tear her eyes away from the peculiar puppies, she wondered if there was something seriously wrong with them, or if she was simply overthinking it, was it all just a result of her exhaustion, or was there really something more to this mystery? She hoped the vet would provide clarity, and yet, a small part of her half expected to suddenly wake up, realizing this had all been a dream, as dawn broke and the sun began to rise, Macy found herself unable to look away from the strange puppies. She couldn't help but wonder if there was truly something wrong with them, or if it was simply her imagination running wild. She was eager for the veterinarian's examination and half expected to suddenly wake up. Realizing it had all just been a vivid dream, once it was feasible, Macy placed Bella and the unusual puppies into her car and headed for the shelter. She arrived before the vet, her anxiety mounting as she hoped to gain some clarity, even though the situation wasn't exactly urgent. The immediate priority was that Bella and the puppies were alive and appeared to be in stable condition, still. A thorough checkup by the vet was necessary to confirm Macy's initial observations and put her mind at ease. Upon their arrival and after being introduced to the vet, he initially appeared puzzled, but soon began the examination. He confirmed that Bella was generally in good health, though quite fatigued and slightly dehydrated. Despite Macy's diligent care, it seemed that Bella would recover fully from her ordeal. Much to Macy's relief, however, the puppies were another story. The vet shared Macy's concerns, noting their odd appearance, but eventually determined the cause of their peculiarities. The strange spots on their coats were likely the result of Bella mating with a Dalmatian possessing dominant genes, a reminder of how unpredictable canine genetics can be. Furthermore, the unusual, almost bovine-like features of the puppies were attributed to them being born prematurely, 
almost a month early, meaning that not all their features had fully developed before birth. This premature birth raised even more questions. Why had Bella gone into labor so early? The vet speculated that some trauma Bella might have experienced while on the streets could have triggered the early labor. Despite Macy's best efforts to care for her, the stress from her past, combined with her current situation, may have contributed to the puppies being born prematurely. The early birth meant the puppy's health was at greater risk. But the vet reassured Macy that with the right care at the shelter, the puppies should be able to thrive. Fortunately, all the puppies survived and gradually grew into healthy dogs. Once they were weaned and old enough, they were put up for adoption at the shelter. Within less than two weeks, each puppy had found a loving new home, no longer resembling cows but developing into charming Dalmatian retrievers, while the puppies were in high demand among adopting families. Bella's situation was different. As an older dog who had endured much hardship in her life, she caught Macy's attention, and Macy decided to adopt Bella, providing her with the forever home she deserved. Macy continues to work at the shelter, and Bella frequently accompanies her, spending time with the other dogs, playing, and bringing joy to everyone she meets. Adopt Bella and give this wonderful and unique dog the life she deserves. Macy and Bella's story is a testament to resilience and the unbreakable bond that can form between a caregiver and their dog. Macy continues to make a difference at the shelter, and Bella's presence reminds her every day of the power of compassion and love. Do you have any thoughts after watching the above video? Share your comments with us. We'd love to hear from you. That's all for today's story. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. See you next time.